So I think I have a feeling that um, we'll have a, like two more people join us in the next okay. minutes. So uh, I think what we'll do is just start with our check-in round so we can like move through our time together. Great. Um, yay. I am so happy to see all of you today. It is really good to be here with you. It's been an interesting, an interesting <laughs> cycle of time since we met last. Uh, we were just talking about that, Sonia and I, and so I feel like, yeah, it's good to be here. And um, I'm really excited for what we're doing today and for the conversation we're about to embark on. So, very cool. Um, so I, let's just start with our, our check-in, see where everybody is today, what you're bringing in with you. Um, whatever's on your heart and your mind. Uh, Jessica, would you like to go first? Um, so self-care, that was what just um, Last week when we were talking about the labyrinth and everything like that, um, throughout the week, uh, I just started getting a lot of messages about it. And it's all about like perception. And, you know, a lot of people think, you know, life is a maze and we come to like walls and blockages but if we change our perception and look at it as a labyrinth you know that'll help a lot because it's like if we change our thinking of looking as mirroring others or others mirroring us it's like i am you and you are me and we are we and we are i and i am merely a reflection and a projection of myself so when we come in life, when we come to blockages as we think they are, or um, things that are interfering with the flow of what we're doing, um, if we look at it, stop, if it causes us to have a reaction, like if someone says something to us and we start to feel a reaction coming up, instead of reacting, we can stop and say, okay, why is this making me feel this way? Or, um, what am I doing to make me feel this way? And then it'll easily start to flow again because if we change our perception and stop looking at it as a blockage and start looking at it as, uh, I don't really know how to explain it, but like a tool as to grow in that, right in that time and space. Like when I was younger, even as a teenager, I always thought that I was in a coma and I was just reflecting my life or I was already dead and this was all just a reflection of things that I've already done. And technically it kind of is because everything is happening at the same time. Sorry, that's my son. <laughs> we only have today, the present right now. So um, I've really just been reflecting on everything being a labyrinth and stopping and looking at is this a reflection or a projection you know what i mean of myself and how can i change it or what do i need to do to move forward i don't know that's just been where i've i've been at that's a really really cool interesting and very like i have a lot of images occurring as you're talking about that um yeah. way to start off today so thinking about the labyrinth and are we reflections or projections of ourselves, which I think um, also just fits in so nicely with what Sonia and I were just talking about and where we're gonna segue into today. Yeah. Awesome. Thank That's you so awesome. much for starting us off. Thank um, you. Susan, would you like to check in with us next? Sure. I've been looking at the, the next level of self care for me and what that means. I really have come to understand that what you ask for, you will eventually get, but it may be out of the timing of when you think you wanted it. So I just said to my husband this morning, as I was literally got one of these old fashioned calendars, right? To try to like visually see the busyness. And I said to him, yeah, I must have called this in in the last two years as I was healing from surgery and everything. Cause it's all like, it's wonderful, but it's all coming together like now. And it was like, oh my God, I had such anxiety going to sleep last night, projecting forward into these months and feeling like I said, it's all good, but it's a rush of good. And I'm like, wow, I, I have to figure out how to manage this flow in a way that doesn't wipe me out. Cause I'm, I'm, I'm already tired and it hasn't happened yet looking forward. And 
I have been experiencing this thing online called ASMR. I don't know if you guys have heard of it, but it's a binaural meaning both ears. It's recorded into both ears sounds or uh, whispering that does something to our nervous system to allow it to relax. And at first I thought, that's not going to do anything. Then I tried it before I know it, I was like, oh my God, I'm relaxed. And so they'll like tap on things or this one guy does this massage that gets me so relaxed. But while listening to this one guy who was in Istanbul, all of a sudden there was this, you know, ah, and I'm like, I wonder if that's the call to prayer. And then he stops and says, this is the call to prayer. And something just clicked in me that went, I think this is what I need to figure out how to do to, for me to, to make that the priority, which then everything else organizes underneath time to self, time to meditation, time for prayer. So that's what I'm looking at right now is that phrase call to prayer and how can I bring it in my life in a more daily way or more ritualistic way so that time molds around God and the universe instead of me trying to fit myself into the busyness because I, there's a lot of work to do and it's wonderful but but I'll get burned out and I have to figure that out so that's what's on my mind now mm. yes <laughs> totally I love that idea of like creating a trigger for ourselves, like a call to prayer or a call to relax or a call for whatever we need to drop us into that space. That's really beautiful. Awesome. Um, great. Thank you. Stephanie, would you like to go next? Hi, guys. Sure. Um, let's see. Self-care. I haven't had much of that this week. <laughs> um, I've just been, you know, trying to take care of everybody else my daughter's sick my friend with her surgery and everything but um i did manage to stay present and not get stressed out um anxiety's been pretty low um let's see that's that's it been pretty mild awesome yeah um that's amazing that you're able to be there for your friend right now too and if she uh or if she's willing um i'm sure we'd all be happy to send her some love and some prayers too if, oh, she, if she's up for that totally willing she's really she loves the work that we do she doesn't have the gift or anything but she's uh been my roommate since i was 17 and you know we've been best friends since then so she yeah. totally gets what we do awesome well, I'll, I'll definitely send her some prayers and put her in my Awesome. Makeup. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Natasha, how you doing? I'm good, for the most part. Um, my biggest self-care this week is just kind of scheduling in 10 to 15 minutes to meditate. Um, yeah, that's my biggest thing because that's something that I had stopped doing that I was doing daily, so... Just getting that kind of shifted and focused back in. Yeah, that's about it for me. Awesome. Also trying to meditate this week, but I'm failing so far at it. <laughs> but that's what a practice is, right? We keep trying to do it. <laughs> it's so nice to see you in a tank top, by the way, because it's really cold here. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> it's really cold here too, actually. Um, <laughs> I'm just really like we have the heat on so it's making me hot and it's such a contrast between like outside and inside with so cold outside well not as cold as most of you are but definitely cold for me so but the heat makes me hot too so i'm like yeah okay. Can't talk today. okay i was like oh wow she looks so sunny and so <laughs> and I, yeah, I went to the beach on Sunday and I got sunburned. So I definitely have more color than I normally have, but it's sunburned. So it will fade and I will go back to my glowing white that I usually am. <laughs> awesome. It's so nice to see you. Uh, Elizabeth, would you like to check in next? For self-care, I have really just, um, well, I have made it a practice to journal. And that's leading to just being really focused on where I can settle in to be on a sustainable path, if that makes sense. So it's helping me organize and it's been really nice. It's helping me make 
connections instead of one day thinking one day thing, the next day being on a whole different target. Now I'm organized. It can have a pattern and a flow. So, and I'm so jealous that it's warm there. It is so cold here. I am hermiting up officially. I'm not going outside if I can help it. <laughs> it is also getting really cold here. It actually snowed this week, which was nice for like a moment. And now. <laughs> Um, I liked when I saw your journaling, I was really inspired and almost thought, wow, I should do that. But what I realized is I gave myself two and I thought they wouldn't be too ambitious, which like this week, my self-care commitments were the 15 minutes a day of meditation, which I've done none of, to be really honest, <laughs> which I'm like, wow, okay, this is really a challenge for me right now. And uh, a salt soak every night and that I'm doing well at. Um, and so I think maybe that was like, maybe the threshold of my actual ability right now and ambition is to just commit to that time and see that as a meditative space rather than like thinking that I have to compartmentalize what meditation looks like as something I sit yes. and do. Um, yes. Yeah. So I think some of the, some of the self-care I'm realizing that it's what is most self-caring for me right now, I think has to do with, like realizing like what actually like where I actually am <laughs> yeah. and being okay with that and so you know realizing like if things are a little too ambitious or too rigid maybe for me mm -hmm. that that is maybe not where I'm able to be at the moment um <clears throat> and also uh yeah like right now I'm having Sonia and I were just having this really great discussion um, as we kind of prepped and got started here, which is a lot about like what I'm encountering right now is a lot of just like the pieces of myself that are really not evolved into the places where other parts of me that I tend to more strongly identify with are, uh, and watching that stuff come into, uh, the surface and into the light, like in a really awkward way. <laughs> that I don't like necessarily want to own and claim, but need to uh, well and integrate. So I yeah. think, yeah, blessings. Um, right now, I think that's, that's very present for me in my life right now. And um, I think also we will talk a lot about that today collectively as well. Um, so I'm gonna let Sonia check in next, and then uh, we will start uh, with our session today. Great, um, boy, I've been really going through some very, very deep, very ancient, um, embedded negative uh, transformation. Um, how do I, and that's part of my talk today. That's part of the reason why I'm doing this, talk about the quantum field and extrasensory perception and how us intuitives are even more, um, it intensifies that even more because we feel so much deeper, so much more. But um, I've been going through like dark, like, um, what do you call it? When you walk through the valley of shadows, you know, kind of thing. And <clears throat> so it's, I have been doing a lot of self-care though. I've been, um, I was telling Brandy, I've been meditating like two hours at night before I go to bed. I go to bed like at eight o'clock and I'll meditate till 10. Um, and I'm doing Joe Dispenza's work right now in the meditations that he has. And then in the morning, uh, cause I'm reprogramming, I'm rewiring my brain. Um, in the morning I do a, a group meditation, which you guys are all welcome to come and join, which is the quantum field meditation um, that takes us there and that starts to uh, dissolve, if you like, those negative ingrained patterns that we've had since babyhood, literally, and that are also familial, um, like patterning, negative patterning. And so I'm doing these morning free meditations for people to come in and be in the field and for us to grow and build coherence together. Um, so that's what I've been doing by myself is building that coherence and connecting because I'm a remote viewer, I can connect to other other beings out there that are already there that already have their hearts in that place and it really helps me to get into that place with my heart you know so i have been doing a tremendous amount of self-care 
um, the last couple of weeks because there's been like like you guys were all saying you know the shadow part of me comes up and tries to sabotage stuff in my life really intensely and I'm being really being hyper vigilant and paying attention to it and how to shift it you know and how to go no that's the past I'm not going to relive the past and then create it in my future present moment because that's what we do is it's a habitual thing and I'm starting to change those habits and I'm noticing like you Brandy how difficult it is and how that aspect of me doesn't want to die so it attacks you know and it and it comes in at different times and it sabotages and it it's that negative talk and it's it's really interesting to you know one of the things that joe says is if you can observe it you're disassembling that pattern you're literally starting to dissolve it because you're being the observer observing you're no longer uh participating when you participate and you get all anxious pissed off whatever the emotions are then you're lost in it but the moment that you could pull yourself back and no nope, change you know i'm going to change this and you're aware of it you're actually not going to fire and wire those neurons back together and what doesn't wire and fire together well you know goes by the wayside and then the the whole other part of it is to reprogram the new positive me the new identity if you like my new um, identity and that goes to like what Susan was talking about you know it, that goes into the divine and stepping in with the divine and co-creating with the divine you know which may not at all be what I my ego personality had imagined you know at all but to go with that flow and I get like total God bumps when I talk about this because I know I'm going in the right direction and to have that you know instead of having the fear like because that's that shadow part that has the fear of dying. I have the excitement and I have the, the presence of the present moment, of being in the present moment and just creating from that place. You know, so that's what I keep bringing myself back to and keep reminding myself. And when that negative, you know, back talk gets really loud and can't stop and does that looping thing, I just go, okay, I'm going to go into meditation. That's what I do. I go to this one hour and 15 minute meditation that you can buy on this is on his website for six bucks and download it and I've been doing that like every time that happens and I, I I'm having a hard time controlling that aspect of me and immediately I go into that space of surrender of paying attention and it's just an entrainment you know to get me to that place where I can I can dissolve this you know and come from a new place so that's where I'm at Awesome. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Working with the shadow. Like that's been a huge, huge theme for me recently too. And it's really like, it's interesting because I think it's such a, like, it's such a curious thing. I feel like there's a lot of like, uh, I guess there's like limited amounts of information as we start to, that starts to come into our awareness that we can access about how to do that. It's like, we can kind of define what it is. Right. And then like actually knowing how to both like honor it and integrate it. Cause it's like, it's, it's figuring out the tricky dance between like bringing it into the light and healing it and actually integrating it into us in a way that's useful rather than spiritually bypassing, which is what we were talking about before, which I think um, a lot of our kind of spiritual culture um, sometimes promotes, you know? And so I think figuring out the right tools and approaches for ourselves to do that is like huge and revelatory. Um, so I'm so excited for you to lead us today. Good segue. <laughs> um, so Sonia, I'm so, so thrilled that you're going to lead us. Um, and Sonia, you, you've been doing this work for, I think I read 40 years. Is that right? Mm -hmm. You look yeah. amazing. And I don't even know how that's possible that you'd be doing this for 40 years. But, you, <laughs> but I'm, almost, I'm almost 60. I'll be 60 next year. I just turned oh. nine this year. So. Oh. Well, it's your spirit shining through. I would not, I would not guess that. And um, I, I'm so just like honored and excited for you to bring your wisdom and your practice today. 
Um, and so Sonia works as a lifestyle coach, uh, energetic healer, a medical intuitive, a trans channeler, um, and also a host and a, a like online host and 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 personality for your own show as well. Um, so and you've been doing this work for like such an amazing amount of time, and your work is really like one thing I've been really inspired by by looking at it is the breadth and the depth of your work, um, which I just feel like. It's, you just have so much to share here and to bring to us. So I'm really excited for today. Thank you so much for being our guest and our spotlight. I'll let you uh, take it away. And I, if you need help uh, sharing the presentation, just let no, me know. No, actually, I'm really good with, I, I have Zoom that I use for my clients and stuff and I know how to use it. So I am gonna actually go to my screen, but before I do that, Let's see, I'm gonna have to cancel out of there and move this over here. And now I can go to share screen and we'll share um, this guy. So I put together this PowerPoint presentation for all of us so you can kind of follow along. But what I wanted to talk about today is the quantum field and extrasensory development and how they correlate and how they're connected and the key facts about uh, the extrasensory self-development in the quantum field and how to get results in your life and how to manifest the reality you desire most, and also how, how to assist your clients. I mean, I'm really doing this kind of like as a teacher for others to, to do this work. Um, more than talking about me and my clients and how I work with them, I will talk a little bit about that. But the reason why I brought that, and I have that on my website, the extrasensory self-development, is because I, in this culture and in this planet, our inner senses have been like, um, what do I wanna say? Like they've been filtered out like, and, and people see it as extrasensory, but the truth is, is that we have, and that's been my experience my whole life as a child. And you know, I've been this intuitive my whole life. And I'm one of those few people that, that came here awake you know, because a lot of people say, oh, I just woke up. I'm like, no, I've been awake my whole life. And it was really painful, really challenging, felt like the odd duck um, and kept that hidden, by the way, because um, I didn't want to be a lab rat because I, uh, when I was younger, I could, and I'm getting those powers back of telekinesis and I could move up big objects. So um, I could do some pretty amazing things. So I'm getting back to that, but let's get focused on this. So um, the extrasensory development work is about, I can read into your life map and see into corners where you uh, were either unaware or need more clarity on. That's the shadow stuff that I work a lot with people because that really helps them when they start to integrate, like you said, Brandy, the shadow material in themselves, then they can start actually resolving it and, and, dissolving it in some cases when it's very negative and it doesn't serve the person anymore and in other other cases we can integrate it into wisdom uh, when i work on healing clients i investigate all the levels especially the unconscious mind and negative programming that is causing them their pain that is where the pain comes from and that is very much in the quantum field kind of work that i do from the soul spirit level to the mental and emotional bodies right down to the physical and elemental levels uh, work upon um, trouble spots by bringing a, a white light energetic healing um, into all those levels and then I, I that includes working quantum field work with them doing body centered meditations chakra clearings um, uh, and activations different kinds of activations DNA activations JCO removals uh, past life regressions. I don't do much of that. I do more of Akashic record reading and I'm super accurate with that. It's pretty amazing. And then the soul infusions, which have to do with the body centered meditation, soul retrieval work and healing us ancestral negative programming, which is basically what brought this negative programming in us and a lot more. So, um, I also put here my social networks where you could reach me. A number of sessions to achieve results with clients depends on each individual and how embedded their negative programming is ingrained. Uh, how I stumbled upon this dynamic mixture of the extrasensory with the quantum field. Um, 
is through my intuitive gifts, I was born with them, and through self-reflection and self-development is um, how I came upon this. And I'm just like a sponge and I'm always learning and actually uh, like going into these places. So my whole life I've been in, if you like training and uh, my credentials are silver mind control. I was uh, one of the first graduates in Mexico of the silver mind control. I was there for two years with Dr. Silva himself. Uh, my mom took me there when I was like 10, 11 years old. He's no longer with us. He was an older man then. Then um, neuro-linguistic programming with Tony Robbins. Um, core quantum method of healing energetics with a German woman um, in the Bay Area. And then Academy of Remote Viewing and Influencing. I got my certificate in 2013. And then global certificate in life coaching with expert rating. And then, of course, I'm the director and pro producer of Surfing the Cosmic Waves. So... I'm going to bring the next slide up and when you are born being a psychic or intuitive with these extrasensory abilities your world or perception of reality is complexly not completely complexly different from the people around you that were not born with these gifts why is this is a question i want to ask all of you and the answer that I came up with, but maybe I have different answers, is because we see, feel, hear, and taste with a multidimensional perception of realities. And that goes right to um, Jessica and to what she was talking about in the labyrinth. Um, that we have this multidimensional sense, cell, uh, sense of perception. And like you said, you're not sure if you're, you know, in a dead state having this dream or that this is the dream state. and some of the people reverse it and when you die, you go into the actual waking state. Um, I've died twice, literally, and I don't call them near-death experiences because I was pronounced dead, dead both times. Um, and I've been there and have come back. Um, one when I was five, the other when I was 14 years old. And I can definitely tell you that from my experience, it's like that's also happening simultaneously while we're here, and it's a different reality. It's a different expression of, of our multidimensional self. So I'm gonna go to the next slide. And unfortunately on these slides, they don't pop, and, but they're pretty pictures that kind of go through the... Um, so let's talk about the infinite possibilities in the quantum field. And that's the key about the quantum field, is all these scientists have now discovered that uh, the quantum, and it, it can move with our consciousness, um, and what is the quantum field? So if anybody has questions about that, you know, we'll do a question and answer after I'm done. But if you're not sure about it, I can explain it to you. How does the quantum field relate to our individual extrasensory self-development? So that's another thing to think about for you guys to kind of like chew on. <laughs> And are we really individuals having this experience in matter? In other words, are we separate? Is each one of us separate? Or are we a single organism? And I'm talking about mankind, okay, being an organism called humanity, working on remembering what we are and how we are all vibrating particles of energy expressed in these appearing individual body, physical bodies. So that's a very profound question to ask ourselves because the day that we integrate as a organism is the day that this planet will be transformed. And so we will, so will we. So I'm going to go to the next slide. Um, I would love the opportunity to share and give you a small taste, taste of creating the quantum field um, uh, with a little bit of a, if like 15 minutes guided meditation. Uh, for all of you guys to go into using this guiding meditation to attain the whole purpose of doing this, you guys, is to not be distracted, uh, to be in coherence with each other, like heart, mind, coherence. And I'll tell you why this is so important, is if we reach heart, mind, coherence as a group, it will assist you personally in changing the dynamics inside of you that are causing you pain and suffering. And it'll actually awaken a part of you where you could you realize that the field is here. We're all connected. We're all one, and we're all integrated into this great um, creation, 
soup, is I, what I call it, um, and to attain that. So, um, so I'm gonna ask everybody to close your eyes and take a deep breath. And relax. And I am going to play some um, binaural um, music for everybody. That's not the actual one that I want. Um, there we go. And this will help you kind of meditate and get into that state. So just breathe in and out slowly and just relax. And as you breathe in and out, just feel yourselves getting centered and start dropping your mind. You want to drop your mind, drop your body, and start dropping into your heart, into your heart coherent energy. And just breathe in and breathe out. And remember, the whole purpose of this guided meditation is for all of us here to come in unison and to come into coherence. So I'm going to ask you to start feeling your heartbeat. Where is your heart? You could even put your hand on your heart and feel if it's out of coherence, if it's in coherence, and if it is out of coherence, just connect to the other people here that are in coherence. And just breathe in and out. Nice, long, deep breaths. And at the same time that you're breathing in and out and listening to the sound, I want you to be aware of your surroundings because that gets us into a theta state. So just be aware of your surroundings. Breathe in and out. And start to feel us come into coherence with one another. And feel how beautiful that is. How we're one single organism here. And feel your head open, your crown open. Feel your heart open in gratitude because that's how we receive. And feel yourself in a state of gratitude, of wonderment. We just imagine that we're all able to hold hands and that we're all coherent with our hearts. And how does it feel to be relaxing into this state of heart mind coherence? And once we start to reach the state group coherence now, we can inject the field with your desires and be in a state of gratitude. So just start creating your day today. What do you want to create <clears throat> in a positive way into existence today? What would you like to achieve to manifest today? 
And like Brandy said, make it small, don't overdo it. Whether it's meditating, doing a meditative bath, whatever it is, self-care, just see yourself achieving that, completing that. Because the small steps that we manifest take us to the bigger ones. And just breathe that in and breathe it in in gratitude. Because gratitude is the unlimited state of receiving. And from this unlimited state of receiving is where we create and manifest our reality, our new reality. So keep injecting into the field of all possibilities in the quantum field what it is that you want to create. Is it a new you? Are you letting go of your old personality that no longer serves you? You are now in a state of building a new you, a new reality for yourself? Take a deep breath in and breathe that in. And start feeling those moments of aha. Any downloads, anything you get, just jot them down in your mind. And when we're done with this meditation, you can write them down. And know that anything and everything is possible when you are in the quantum field. And when you're in coherence with others, and our energy will help you manifest, and your energy helps us manifest. And also this coherence gets us closer to an intimate state with the divine, with feeling into the divine and being with the divine. Mm. Because ultimately, that's what we are. We are fractals of the divine that chose to manifest itself into physical form in these bodies, in these consciousnesses. So to go back into the divine is to go back into wholeness within us. And to start playing from this place, a vastness of place, to start playing big, grand and stop being small and to remember who you are at the core of you that you're this unlimited being this sun this star that is connected to all the other stars to all the other universes and that you have incredible, incredible powers within you to release that and allow yourself to be grand. What would it be like for you to be this grand being, to have a grand, grandiose life? What would you be like? What would you think? How would you feel every moment? In what state would you be walking in? And because you're in this state of gratitude, wouldn't you be in a state of also giving and receiving? And you'd be excited to get up the next morning, and go to your next thing that you're going to do. So be in that space. And know that everything, everything is possible from the quantum field perspective to be created into reality. And breathe that in. And as you're here sitting in this state, 
make notes of the little thoughts that come in that sabotage. Because you want to pay attention to those so that you stop firing and wiring these thoughts that sabotage your reality. That's the past. That no longer serves you. It doesn't love you. It's just a rehearsal of the past to let go of, to dissolve, so that you can recreate the new you to become this new, amazing you. And replace it with the attitudes, the personality behaviors that you want to fire and wire in order to create the new you, the new personality that's limitless. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start bringing you back from that place and bring you back through the levels to a beta state. And back into this reality from the unified field, the quantum field. And you can open your eyes when you're ready. And please share what your experience has been. Or it is. Anybody want to share? I'll share. Okay. Um, I saw all of us in a room, but we weren't in our um, physical bodies. We were in our energetic bodies. It was completely dark, but we were kind of like an outline of glowing light, mm -hmm. um, kind of rotating to the right. And then our heart energy was beating in the middle, but it was staying like vibrating in the middle really, really strong. But we kept cir circling around it, our, just our energetic bodies to the right very, very slowly as we were connecting and, and, and our chakras were lying, um, lighting up, and it was just amazing. Woohoo! Awesome. <laughs> you were definitely in the field. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Field. Yeah, you're welcome. You can come and share with us every morning. I do this for an hour. We do an hour meditation from 7 Pacific Standard Time to 8 o'clock in the morning, and then I do the meditation then afterwards, if people can stay and share like we do here, we have half an hour to do that. So, Awesome. Okay, thank you. Um, it's free. Yeah. Anybody else want to share? Um, I experienced pretty much the same thing that Steph did. Um, as far as uh, seeing us all in a room and us connecting to a light in the center. <laughs> and uh, for me, it's like... Uh, it's like I'm myself and everybody's my other self, but we're all like a part of source energy. So it's like if source was an octopus or a jellyfish, we're all the little tentacles. Mm -hmm. And that's how everybody is. So when we do group meditations, we get that opportunity to step back and then reconnect in and see the fuller picture of how we're all connected. Mm -hmm. So that's always cool. Awesome. But yeah, I kind of experienced basically the same thing she did. Great. I hope you enjoyed it. Who's next? I can go. Yay! <laughs> uh, two things that were prominent, and I just jumped up to grab my uh, medicine card book. Uh, I very clearly saw a deer. Uh, yeah, and, deer medicine. Yeah. Uh, gentleness. Mm -hmm. it says if deer is uh, present, you're asked to find the gentleness of spirit that heals all the wounds. Don't push so hard to get others to change and just love them as they are. Apply gentleness to your present situation. Apply, uh, become like the summer breeze, warm and caring. This is a tool for solving any dilemma. Uh, and as we went into it, I immediately saw what looked like a floating multicolor ribbon and then uh, 
that beautiful song from Stevie Wonder, Ribbon in the Sky, that was started playing and the, that phrase, there's a ribbon in the sky or ribbon in the sky for our love. Mm -hmm. And I just saw it moving like through each one of us, like it was wow. OE and alive and moving through us. And then it started to circulate like out. Wow. Yeah, it was very beautiful. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Love. awesome. Who's next? I'll go. Um, I had a really like lovely experience and then also a lot of, I also then experienced a lot of like blah, 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 uh -huh. as well. Um, and then interestingly, towards the end where we were, where you were talking about letting go of um, the old self and, and letting that stuff go, I started to feel and see this like fire start like from my heart center and then start to kind of like, it was a very like warm and uh, revitalizing kind of feeling and it kind of just was covering me. And then I started having images of creating something. Susan and I were talking about this earlier in the week as well, but creating something um, that was emblematic, almost like a funeral pyre of that old self. And yeah. then allowing that to be burned. So I think that I'm actually going to try to physically do that <laughs> this week as well. But I, I found that to be um, a really kind of profound uh, experience just in a meditative state. Wow. That's awesome. really beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Stephanie, Jessica? Want to share? Well, Stephanie already did. Jessica. Um, I couldn't really do the meditation. My son was all distracting and everything, but I was listening and I did, I didn't get any visuals obviously, but my forehead started to like get really hot and I had the fan on. So I know it wasn't like, it was like my energy was definitely in there cause I could feel the heat of it. So that was pretty awesome. Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> In closing, I just want to let everybody know, and the, this PowerPoint presentation I put together will be here. I will uh, share it one more time. The last page, um, let's see, is where I actually um, am thanking everybody here for joining me, and then I'm going to do the morning meditations. And if you want to come, it's at, I have go to meeting. I can have up to 150 people, so. If you want to just email me at sonicnova, info at sonicnova.net, and I will send you the link to the go-to meeting that you can call in. I'm not doing a video, I'm just doing a call in. And then um, for people that want to experience a deeper level of this, you're welcome to come to my website and book a session for coaching and helping you remove some of these blockages. So, and then again, all my Instagram and LinkedIn and YouTube and all that good stuff is here. So there it is. Beautiful. Thank you. Can I share the presentation with the video whenever I share it? I'll put it as a link there um, and we can have it all in one place. You can also share it on the wall, but I'll keep it there with the video. Oh, that would be awesome. Yeah. And that can be so if people, you know, access it in the future as well, they can see. I can put it there so that people can, because if I have the PowerPoint presentation, they can access the hyperlinks. That's great. That'll yeah. be awesome. Um, I had a couple of questions too uh, that came up during your presentation. I think we have, yeah, good, we have time. Um, I was curious about two things that were unfamiliar to me that you mentioned were J-seal removal and soul infusions. And I was like, oh, those are very interesting sounding. I would really love to hear more about what that is. Okay. So the J-seal removal, and that's actually As Asiana, As Asiana Dean's work. Okay. I'm not familiar with her. Um, she's very multidimensional. And on my website, if you go to the J-seal page, it says that and has links to her website. But what she saw psychically on the planet is that the reptilians had come here and embedded these death seals, these death programs, which it's really interesting that I'm doing this work because what I do is people come to me and I remove these seals, the J seals off of people energetically. Like I get rid of them and um, they're, 
attached to pains, left side pains in the body usually, and maladies that people have in the body. And I never do a 12 strand DNA activation energetically till I do the JCL removal first. So the JCL removal, what it does is that there's several death seals, death, like death causing, get death eventing kind of causes. And what's so interesting is that in doing this work with Joe Dispenza, he also talks about death programming is the negative programming, all the negative thoughts, right? The anger, the rage, the frustration, the, all, all this, those negative thoughts are, are death programs. And it's very interesting how it correlates the J-seals, that that's what was embedded on humanity. Um, the dark aspect of it, of, of course, was to keep us suppressed and keep us small. The positive aspect of it, because there's always that duality here, right? The positive aspect is for us to overcome it, surpass it, and become like larger than life beings and really step into our power. So it's, it's a catalyst, if you like. So the JCL removal helps people catalyze that and get them to the next level. Um, and then the other question that you had was about, what was the other thing? Oh, um, the soul infusion. But oh. the JCL, is JCL, can you remove them yourself? Is that a practice that oh. someone can kind of start doing? For Possibly if you, study, if you study how she did it, then yes. Um, if not, it's not expensive. I only charge 95 bucks. There's people on the planet that are charging thousands of dollars to do that. I don't believe in that, you know, and I do this work remotely. So people are not even present while I do the process. Um, so you'd have to read her books and learn how to do the JCO removal. And then you probably could, I, I always like to go to other people to do these things because I'm blindsided by some of my stuff. Hmm. So that's part of why some of the J seals won't be removed is because you don't see them. You know, you can't see the forest through the trees when it comes to you, me as a psychic myself. So that's why I always have mentors or other people that can help me with that. That's really interesting. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then the soul infusion work. Um... Soul infusion is, yeah, that totally relates to what we did today. Uh, entering into an altered state where we have heart coherence, where our mind and heart is coherent. And when I do the soul infusion work, we do a meditation. We do an hour, an hour and a half meditation where we come into that state where there's no more noise. It's very quiet. It's like the silent, still voice. And when we're in that place where our chatter is gone, where everything, all the sound, all the noise, all the shopping list, all the stuff that the mind keeps like spinning, the the spinning um, plates, as I call it, you know, when we get into that very profound state, we could literally have our souls infuse into our bodies. So that's a session I do with people where we do a meditation and then I guide you to bring your soul into infuse. So the soul, our soul is always gravitating about 20, 30 feet above our heads. Okay. Never really comes in what we have operating this operating system is our spirit and our spirit i'll make the, the the distinction our spirit is connected to our personality our ego personality that's the thing that keeps reincarnating back in to the bodies when we die and come back is the personality and the personality some people are like gotta kill the ego no 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 it's here to protect us we're in physical form when we go back, when the spirit leaves the body and goes back, it goes back right into the soul. It literally goes back into, into that oneness, which obviously is a fractile of creation itself. So I want to make that important distinction. And so what happens is that very rarely do we get to experience here. I've had multiple experience of having soul infusions where you're in a completely altered state. Sometimes, you know, in agape, I've experienced that. You know, when I used to go to agape life science, you know, um, and they would do, somebody would be up there. It could have been Michael or, you know, or um, somebody else. And all of a sudden I go into that altered state where I feel my soul totally coming. The soul presence is a very gentle, delicate. It's almost like a, a, a feather, like a, a white little feather. And if there's any 
disturbance, any upheaval in our minds, in our hearts, in our bodies, it stays 30 feet above. So the whole purpose of the soul infusion work that I do is to bring us into a coherent moment where we can let go of all that stuff, where we are just in infinite space and we're safe and, you know, your ego is, is taking a back seat and allows the soul to come in and infuse with the ego and bring its wisdom. And a lot of times that's when we get our downloads. That's where I get my invention, my, my supplement products that I invent. That's where all that comes from is from the soul because the soul is ultimately all wisdom. Um, it's ultimately, it's the quantum field. <clears throat> it's the garment of the divine because it's all one. You know, so, so that's the soul infusion work that I do with people is to bring, and, and that's, people usually that want to do that kind of work with me are pretty advanced. I call them initiates. You know, most people, like, they don't even ask about it. But high advanced initiates have a tendency, they really want to merge, have that experience of having a physical body and having your soul, soul merge into your body. And when you do that, it is a phenomenal, it's a phenomenon. It definitely is phenomenal kind of experience where you just are, all of a sudden you have the intelligence of the oneness of everything that is, you know, creating itself into realities and multiverses and simultaneously. And it's sometimes for me, it's been a little bit overwhelming and I've been in awe about it, but I've had, I just had that experience in 2018 and uh, where the universe literally stepped into my body and it almost blew out my kidneys because the energy was so intense, so powerful. It was so powerful that I actually had a black ops helicopter circle around my house on top at three o'clock in the morning because it was putting that kind of pulse. They must have thought it was an ET or something. I don't know. And <clears throat> from that space, not me, but this, this, energy this infusion with the universe whooped 150 mile hour winds within 30 seconds and that black ops helicopter was gone <laughs> it was the most amazing thing to experience you know in this dimension in that dimension so i hope that answers your question about the soul infusion and yeah. it's a process. very proud very very powerful and like um just like ultimate kind of presence of full embodiment. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, you got it. And I did learn that from Neil. I did take his his course, you know, because he was teaching. He's not doing that now, but he was doing a meditation course, a body-centered meditation, where as practitioners, we went there and took a course for two or three weeks with him. Um, and... I learned how to do this. You know, one of the things he said, and it's probably because of my two death experiences, he said he, I'm the only student that he has ever had that could drop down so quickly and so deeply and allow this space to happen in me, you know, and I'm pretty sure because he explains that he said people that haven't died have a knot in their heart because they're afraid to die, right? That it blocks them from like dropping so fast and because I've died twice. I'm not afraid of death. It's like, look. <laughs> so pipeline. <laughs> it is. Pipeline. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Um, who else has questions or uh, about any either the meditation that we did or anything for Sonia about her practice or? Uh, can, can I comment on it? It's it's like. Um when you realize that you are the soul and that your ego your body your flesh is the vehicle you're the driver and your higher self is the ai system within the vehicle that you know you talk to like scotty beam me up or you know and it's you are the quantum field the quantum field is within you therefore if you push out it will go into the universe because you are the universe. So it's when you push your quantum field into the universal quantum field, that's where manifestation will be able to happen. That's what I, that's what you were saying and how I, how I look at it. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. 
Sung, you, know, you asked a question, or maybe it was on your presentation written out. It's about us being a single organism. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, have you had experiences that have revealed that to you? And what does, how has it shown up for you? Oh boy, look, I'm goosebumps everywhere. Great question, awesome question. Well, the way, it, and the really weird part of it is it didn't show up as a whole bunch of people. It showed up actually as the mycelia that's on the planet because we are descendants of mushrooms, literally. We physical humans here descended from a species of mushrooms that were on the planet before anything else was here. I have learned that from pop statements. And one of my products is a super immune activator that has probiotics in it, millions and a thousand and one different types of probiotics. And it has mycelia, it has uh, medicine, all the mushrooms that are medicinal within it and that's what connected me to that and made me realize that the consciousness of the um like the different mycelia the the probiotics all that consciousness is what connects us and that we because we are part of that organism mushrooms breathe in and out like we do they they take oxygen in and and they throw out um What's the stuff that, that we throw out that's um, carbon dioxide? Carbon monoxide, yes. They're very much like us. You know, there's a lot of similarities. Genetically speaking, there's so much similarity. But we just took, our evolution took a different, you know, it didn't stay there in the ground. And, and that's where I got the aha moment. And I, when I go into a remote viewing state where I'm in, theta really deep I see all I'm sitting here and I can see right below me and all around me all these billions of people billions not millions all their heads are all around me and that's how I know we're a single organism that literally we're not divided these bodies appear to be divided and have different lives and different experiences but at the mycelic level we are all connected, kind of like in the movie Avatar. Remember when they plug in, if you ever saw it, I don't know if you did or not, when they plug in, that's us when we plug into the mycelia field, you know, or mycelic field, or when we plug into the probiotic field, you know, and that's what like woke me up to the fact that, and I think that's maybe because in sacred texts, they talk about that. They talk about everybody, once everybody gets it, but it's not like that. It, that's the part that I think has been misconstrued. Um, I truly believe that it's only going to take a certain percentage of us to be in that state of oneness that right. will then that wave goes out to everybody else and the people that were out in the periphery that didn't get it all of a sudden they're like, whoa, you know, if I hurt myself, if I hurt you, I hurt me. Right. 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 Um, and it's always, it's so funny because when there's people doing black magic and doing wanting to hurt somebody else and yeah, when you're angry and you've been disappointed and hurt, you want to hurt the other person. It always hurts. I, I just realized that it's like that hurts the person that's trying to put the hurt on you. It doesn't hurt you. You're, you're oblivious to it. Mm -hmm. It doesn't affect you. But in the quantum field, if you like, or in the mycelic field, you know, that disconnect causes, that's what causes all of my perception of reality here on planet Earth is that that's what's causing all the separation, you know, with humans and the wars and all that stuff that we are, you know, that we've had and we've seen and we've experienced is because they don't realize that we're a single organism. We just are in different bodies, but the mm -hmm. consciousness is all connected. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Yeah, absolutely. That was, that was fabulous. And maybe when we do the interview, we could go even deeper. We have time for that. That just one of the things I came out of that night in the hospital, and I didn't know if I was going to stay here or not. Right. But the, the level of compassion, it comes out of uh, every, every, for people, people you don't know, we all, if you're alive, you have a body. And if you have a body, you're suffering. That's it. They're suffering. 
And it is, it's unfortunate, it seems like, but suffering is the thing that can immediately connect us all together because we all get it. Nobody wants to hurt. Nobody wants to feel that. And so that compassionate energy that we all have naturally can actually really be kind of woken up or activated if you understand that the person in front of you, even if you're angry or the group in front of you, even if you don't like them on right. some level, they're hurting or have hurt. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the catalyst. You know, the pain is the catalyst for change. And that's another thing that got downloaded to me by the universe, literally. You know, I call her Gaia. I call Gaia the universe here. Mm -hmm. she downloaded she, she downloaded this to me and she basically you know the thing about pain and she said if we if you didn't have the polarities that you have here that are so intense the very very positive beautiful and the very very negative horrible you would still be worms crawling around on the ground literally that's what she said to me she said you would have you would have no inertia to evolve so we we had to create a duality universe here for you to experience both polarities and extremes for you to actually catalyze yourself into evolution into yeah, evolving yourself into higher beings and, it, and you're right there is an action energy in that yeah. I've, I've had two very profound experiences one when my first kitty passed mm -hmm. and as he was passing it was a very hot day it was very noisy all of a sudden clouds came over and rained and it got cool and all the noise that people were making they all went away everything got very still right. and when he passed there really was that sense of unity i've come to call it his name is jai right? and right. he died at 10 10 so i've come to call that time 10 10 jai and i actually will stop any time time i see 10 10 wow. and connect with that feel because it's there uh it's just us thinking we're separate from it but it is there really always at all times and yeah. he's there you know any any being i don't care if it's an animal or if it's a plant or whatever it is it still exists it's just mm -hmm. the vibrating particles of energy have shifted into something else Absolutely. it's transmuted itself if you like or alchemized itself into the next yeah. one it's just yeah. that we we've been trained here to have limited perception not be able to see them and feel them and hold them my, when my cat died that was kind of like yours my familiar um he stayed with me for three days and i could see his body when he was already passed in my bed and i could hug him i could literally hug him and feel him because of my inner abilities you know and then he finally left you know so wow. yeah that's powerful you and I could keep talking and talking for sure on this subject. It's great. Thank so you. a segue for that is, so are you guys going to do Surfing the Cosmic Waves this Saturday? The two no, of you? next Saturday. Next Saturday. Okay, next cool. Saturday. So please be sure to post so that everybody can join. I will. Um, I will. We're right at, it's at 2.07 here. So I want to be mindful of everybody's time. But if anyone has any last minute things, they're just like, that are on their hearts, they really want to say or questions they want to ask. Now is a great moment. Um, I'm gonna, I know I'm like watching Natasha. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like look at your face. I'm gonna get introduced you to her. Look up, baby. This is Viva. Oh, she decided to join us today. Oh, that's so nice. She's basically in my lap like the whole time. That's <laughs> awesome. The Yoda diamond, my dog, came and sat on my foot during the meditation. Oh, did he? I was like, oh. I was like, oh, something has shifted. He's like drawn in. So uh -huh. He kind of keeps his distance a lot. So that's yeah. how you know that you're in the quantum field is when your animals want to come all around. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. They want to be in there too. <laughs> <laughs> um, great. So a uh, couple just quick little things before we go. Thank you so very much. This was a really beautiful session. And I think just so much what I and we all needed today. And I'm really excited for the conversations that come out of this. I've been taking a lot of notes and I feel like there's a lot of really um, beautiful and uh, powerful things that we're connecting to this week. So awesome. I'm excited to see that evolve. Um, we are now gonna open our community up to new members coming in from the public. So you might see some new people come in. If you do, please uh, help me welcome them. Let's all just welcome them. 
get them, you know, kind of help them figure out how to navigate things. Um, if you'll look in, I revamped our welcome documents as well in the welcome section, uh, taking some of the feedback from the forum that I got. So I'll post that too. I'd love to have your feedback. Also, it could answer a lot of questions that I think that might still be lingering around. So I'll post those today if you can read those sometime over the week. And then just like let me know in the comments if you have questions or just let us know you read them and that you're, you know, on board. Do you have a, a section where when new people come in, we could see their picture and stuff that they just arrived so that we can welcome them or no? They should post in, um, there's like a, a, a icebreaker question that's like okay. the first question they should see. So they should engage with that, but I've realized that not everyone does. So I might try to figure out how to do something like uh, a new member spotlight. Or something. I think that's a great idea. And maybe just like once a week calling out new members and saying, you know, hey, everybody. Um, so I think I, I need to figure out a good way to engage with that. But I love that suggestion. Thank you. Um, also, I'm putting together a little holiday card with the code for you guys to give to three friends to give them a six month guest membership so they can come in and join us too. I thought this would be kind of nice for December as it's the holidays and it's a nice way to give something meaningful and also to help create a larger, you know, cohesion and resonance in our community um, as we have new people coming in. So um, what I'm going to do is send something out like a spreadsheet, like a link to something where you can let me know who you're inviting. That way I can kind of keep track of Definitely. who to expect and where this thing's going. And I'll try to get that out to everybody uh, this week. So you can start connecting cool. with people and inviting them in. Um, yeah. So that's great. Uh, also, I, uh, we need uh, a, a open for volunteers for who wants to lead next week. So if anybody feels called um, to lead a presentation next week for a community spotlight, please let me know. Uh, I can walk you through the process of doing that. Um, and, oh, Steph, I see you. No, sorry, sorry, I was, not, <laughs> I was thinking about doing it after January, actually. Okay. Re remote viewing one. Okay, let me know a date. We can put you, we can schedule you in, in the future too, but there is a space next week if anyone feels called to, uh, called to step in then. Um, if not, we'll figure out maybe a way to do um, something experiential together. And uh, maybe that's even in the form of like practice sessions or something. Maybe we can do like little breakout groups or we'll find a way to uh, inventively use the time, it, it, whatever works best. And also, if you guys want to make suggestions about what you'd like to do next week, that would be awesome too. And then we can, uh, we can see how to make that happen. Okay. Awesome. Great. Thank you so very, very much. And yeah. Um, yeah. You guys have a beautiful week. I'm really excited to see uh, how the conversation unfolds. So, yeah, me too. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.